Hey. In part two, we're talking about. I changed my mind. This series is called Deep Dives for those who are new here. The point isn't to skim over the basic details, it's to go deep. So this sub-series is gonna last a little longer than expected. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Cryptocurrencies are almost entirely scams. The concept itself is a pretty dope one and there's several exceptions, but don't get it twisted. They are exceptions. There's individual coins that have lost people tens of millions of dollars globally, and there's thousands of coins out there. It's essentially as if the stock market was reinvented in the last 10 years, and there's virtually zero regulation against stock manipulation, pump and dump schemes, or insider trading. For all the diamond hands out there, holding until your Shiba Inu coin goes to the moon after a 300% spike, unfortunately, none of that was made up. I got one question for you. What if it goes to hell? Cryptocurrency has grown in popularity and scammers are becoming more sophisticated. $7.7 .7 billion was stolen in cryptocurrency fraud. But the story was a fake and he ended up being scammed out of $17,000. Many creators on YouTube have explained how cryptocurrencies work in far more depth than I have time for. So I'll link some resources to those explanations and dive into the things y'all need to know to understand the rest of the video. These coins and the system that makes them possible represent what some people see as the next step in our financial system. We had livestock to trade for tools at one point, right? Then to make bartering work more efficiently, we swapped in precious metals since they hold near universal value. Metals became paper money and coins like dollars, nickels, and quarters, AKA fiat currency. Yes, for my Gen Z audience, dollars used to be coins too. Then fiat currency went digital. Paper money is basically just a receipt for the real money held by your bank. Once it went digital, paper money still had value, but it was no longer the only way to buy that dog shampoo or air fryer. When I get paid by my day job every couple weeks, sometimes I think, all they did was change the numbers and my life got a little bit better. In reality, there's an entry in my bank's ledger saying my company sent them some money to put in my account. On the company's side, there's a matching entry saying they sent that money to my bank. That happens billions of times a week worldwide, if not more. What crypto brings to the table is decentralization. Instead of individual banks keeping their own ledgers, we got matching ledgers reproduced across a network of millions of individual computers. I know y'all have heard a lot about blockchain. Well, that's just a term for how transactions are organized within that network. If you make a change to one ledger and it isn't reflected in the rest of them, that transaction ain't gonna fly. The transactions aren't anonymous because you have a unique code assigned to you on the network, but they are pseudonymized, so Nobody can guess the name unless they have external clues. Basically, it's the same as most Reddit comments, YouTube too, where a lot of people don't use their real name. Things you don't need to worry about. Banks in general, transaction fees for some currencies, definitely not true for others. And certain types of hacking also become obsolete due to the size of the network. All these coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum are just branded frameworks. People made up to represent the utility of that specific platform. I remember when everyone was going crazy over Bitcoin's sudden rise in value and people who knew nothing about crypto, like me, started getting digital wallets and investing small amounts of money. It was pretty similar to the lottery by that point in that the gold rush was mostly motivated by a big ass number on the news. Not only did I invest in Bitcoin, I also put some money in Ethereum, Litecoin, and a couple others, then I mentioned one of my most popular music videos because a musician friend of mine was making bank selling NFTs. If any of that sounds confusing to you on a conceptual level, hold tight, we're gonna go deeper. Crypto is more than the cons that make the news. The underlying technology is fire and there's plenty of legit moves being made in the space that deserve attention. That ain't what we're focused on in this video, but I figured I should make that clear before we get to the scams. 
If you die, tell them that you play my game. I hope your bullet holes become mouths that say my name, cause I'm the... As you've definitely seen by now, some coins have better marketing than others. We got memes that have turned into real speculative financial assets like Dogecoin, the OG altcoin meant to be a joke that underestimated the internet. Market cap, over $21 billion. There's Potcoin, a coin designed to provide decentralized banking infrastructure for the legal cannabis industry, which sent Dennis Rodman to North Korea for a promo piece. He's going there tomorrow to try to bridge the gap and bring peace and dialogue between both nations. Dentacoin, which is apparently for dentists by dentists and aims to help dentists and patients share data and pay for procedures. Computers already do that. And my favorite I've found so far, the useless Ethereum token. The logo is flipping us the bird and their website literally said, you're going to give some random person on the internet money and they're gonna take it and go buy stuff with it. Honest. I wasn't gonna mention porn coins, but Spank Chain is actually interesting in that they designed an entire blockchain that exists to build secure, anonymous apps. Not the worst idea I've heard, to be honest. Sex work is real work, and these webcam companies take as much as 30% of performance profits. Spank Pay Me is a blockchain payment processor that allows us to keep 99% of our earnings. I mean, we give up a little less than half our profit on YouTube. Damn coin. They got hacked for about $40,000 in Ether, which is the coin tied to the Ethereum platform, in 2018, after which they downsized dramatically. Since then, we've seen coins pop up in surprising categories too. Venezuela created one called the Petro that was announced by the country's president, Nicolas Maduro. According to him, the coin was backed by the country's oil, gas, and diamond preserves and could be used to pay for similar purchases. This is a direct quote. Today, a cryptocurrency is being born that can take on Superman. In case it wasn't clear, Superman in this analogy is referring to the US. Maduro said the coin raised $735 million day one. Blockchain also enables people to develop apps that don't depend on Google or Apple called dApps. So we can throw games like CryptoKitties into the mix too. Think Gigapets, but on the blockchain. Most of these ideas aren't that original, but they are if you were born after 9-11. Not a scam, just pointless. The internet loves pointless and I'm not really here to discourage y'all from doing so. It's dangerous to get too sucked into the coins when analyzing crypto cons in general though. It's always been bigger than that. The question of whether or not a cryptocurrency platform is a scam or not comes down to utility, AKA what they say they're gonna do for their community and or the world at large. And that means we need to look at some pitches. Let's talk about making it hard earn money or putting money on here. So, I mentioned previously that I was a co-founder of a tech startup. I think now's the time for me to explain that in more detail. The startup was called... Welcome to FanSub. In one sentence, we enabled creators to tap into new revenue streams via live streaming tech, an event management platform, and an NFT marketplace. I was a CPO, or Chief of Production. It's a made-up title but all titles are made up. Since our startup was in the live music category and also heavily dealt with film equipment, it made sense for a musician, filmmaker, designer, and business professional to be one of the co-founders, right? I was responsible for talking to venue owners, installing live streaming equipment, helping craft business strategy, and I even performed in one of our concerts. Another one of those responsibilities was designing and updating pitch decks since words and presentation are kind of my thing. We moved to Tulsa as part of an accelerator program. Then we got picked up by a venture capital firm. I've been through all the steps of pitching a tech product and actually being given millions of dollars to run a business. So while the rest of the videos on this topic tend to talk about what happened after the money, I figured we could take a look at the decks these crypto companies used to get that money in the first place. Let's see how many red or green flags we can call out. First up, creator empowerment crypto startups. Our song wants to unleash the value of everyone's creativity by making it universally accessible and tradable. Their first few slides are about how interest in NFTs has plummeted as of 2022. Nobody's buying them. The crypto native market is declining. Expensive NFTs have unstable value. 
NFTs are ass. I think we get the point. They immediately transition into their potential market graph, which is something I've seen many, many times in pitch decks. The goal with this slide is always to make your company look as strong as possible, which is why you'll never see one of these that stops short of claiming they can reach damn near everyone in their country, if not everyone on earth. An NFT-based music app can reach five billion people, right? This one's interesting because they compare themselves to Sony and Pizza Hut's utility, which is pretty optimistic. Now, we're moving into the crux of the pitch, using NFTs as a fan pass for events and access to exclusive media. Let's take this part seriously and see what they got to say. <laughs> yeah, nah. That was the next slide. I, I scrolled directly into that after that one, they have a much more dope example with this anime music collab from Japan. They closed the pitch out with a couple slides about their celebrity founder and chief impact officer, John Legend. I know how this goes. They paid this man a fat check to be the face of the brand. Caramel dropped on a team full of Asian men he'd never met before. In the sake of being thorough, here's their site. Notice how their pitch deck actually had very little to do with the actual utility of their site. They offer music distribution, a free beats library, and streamlined payment. That makes them no different from any other modern distributor. Only difference is that your music rights are automatically smart contracted onto their secure blockchain network, which is a sentence full of real terms that means nothing in this instance. You don't gain anything extra as a musician from having your rights sitting in a PDF on the blockchain. Stop falling for celebrities bull I'm begging you. They raised $7.5 million. Before we move on, let's circle back to the flags I noticed earlier. Who says fans even want to use NFTs to access <laughs> You're assuming we need to monetize every single interaction with our fans, which is already bad enough. But you're also assuming fans are going to jump from something convenient that we know and already like, YouTube, for instance, and move to some new app that looks and feels weird just to support one of the many creators that we follow. Most people don't even want to jump from YouTube to Instagram. Second red flag, they haven't made the demand for this product clear enough. They're leaning way too hard on the existing fan base of these influencers, in my opinion. Fans aren't gonna support anything you do just because that's not how anything works. There's definitely a void in the space to fill though. One note about investors real quick, then I'll dive into a deck for a company in a completely different category. They often throw money at sh they know won't work. There's a lot of reasons for this. They have to invest in something or their LPs, limited partners who funded them in the first place, will get irritated at their lack of action. They don't want a competitor to snatch the company up first and make them look too slow on the draw. They're convinced by a charismatic co-founder team or even one person, or the pitch confuses them just enough to get by. After the pitch, there's supposed to be weeks of due diligence where your business fundamentals and financial health gets analyzed by the fund's experts. Some investment firms do this part better than others. Look, am I being negative just because my company didn't make a somewhat similar idea work? Nah. I don't think so. There needs to be innovation in this space, and I think someone will eventually pull it off. These are decent ideas. Would I invest millions of dollars in these ideas? No. You want the vibe provided? No, y'all be sleeping on right away. She want to love me and ride it. Last couple companies we're going to look at occupy very different sides of this spectrum, but they're both names y'all are going to recognize. I hate this deck so much. I'm actually not the first to show this on YouTube, but probably the first to break it down from this angle. FTX called themselves the leading digital assets exchange and said they're the largest non-Chinese crypto exchange and the fastest growing crypto exchange in the world. <laughs> not anymore. The deck is pretty straightforward for the most part. They got the obligatory comparison graph proving how fast they're growing, what they do. Hold up, hold up. They called out here that their traffic surged during Trump's campaign run after they listed prediction markets on elections. That sh ain't cool, bro. Any deck bragging about adding gambling to presidential elections, it's a no for me, dog. The funniest part of this whole deck is the compliance framework section. Knowing what we know now, this first sentence is crazy. Work closely with policymakers and regulators to operate in a compliant manner. Not only did FTX donate to politicians on both sides to make sure they could steal from US customers, they actively participated in money laundering when they created a backdoor allowing their company, Alameda Research, 
to treat FTX like a piggy bank. There's a felon and several accomplices on this slide that lost around a million investors $8 billion when all the dust settled. Moving on. I'ma call them Basie. They call themselves a Web3 company that explores big ideas in identity, ownership, utility, and interoperability. Fair enough, the ideas are big. To kick it off, they chose to represent their entire co-founding and professional management teams as their NFTs, which is a bold choice, to say the least. Remember this one, it'll come back later. They're proud of their diversity, which is cool. Board Ape Yacht Club is front and center, of course, as it's what put them on the map. Utility was their bread and butter, as events and exclusivity were tied to this platform from the get-go. They list out dozens of celebs on the slide. They're definitely not trying to hide that they're entirely about the hype. Remember when I said this is going to come back? Timbaland, my favorite producer, has the same NFT as Guy Osiri, uh, with the minor exception of the glasses type and stubble. If y'all didn't see how ridiculous this shit is by now, the fact that they chose to put that in a pitch deck and missed it is a small hint. This slide emphasizing the strength of their community is really just pointing out how much hype they've been able to create and capitalize on. But most companies do that, so it isn't even that unusual. Bragging about social followings, par for the course. They insist that what they're building is bigger than bored apes. But it's really not. The very next point they make is that Basie is 10% of the trading volume on OpenSea and that the FOMO is real. Make up your minds. This is the most important part of their pitch though. They say the existing metaverses are boring and siloed, which is actually a point I agree with. Basie wants to make something more compelling than the metaverse by combining it with a game. Not just a game though, the best game combining aspects of everything we've talked about thus far. NFTs as access tokens, VR, RPGs, or role-playing games, and the hype around their live events. They call it a meta RPG. If we build it, they will come is just pure arrogance. And now that I think about it, it's probably what they're going for. You actually own your land and resources is a lie. That's not true at all. and never will be for anything virtual. They try to reinforce this idea by comparing it to the profitability of Fortnite. But this is not Fortnite. The ease of access, practicality, and even proof of concept just isn't there yet to justify that claim. And what do you know? They also introduced ApeCoin. Bro, I'm so tired. From there, they just smoothly transition into the explanation of the game itself, which is imaginative. I'll give them that. They went straight to the Big Bang as the backstory, and it all leads up to thousands of these little creatures called codas being scattered throughout the pieces of land fans are supposed to buy for thousands of dollars in real money. Look, is this idea original? Somewhat. But the core of it is exactly what we've seen from Crypto Kitties, Crypto Punks, and the original Bored Ape NFTs themselves. Thousands of fundamentally identical designs used as the hook to get your money invested in something that isn't real. MMORPGs and even sports video games like NBA 2K have been milking players for years now, but in my opinion, this is delivering worse products in exchange for way more money. I spent $60 on a new PS4 game before. You're not gonna see me paying you multiple months of rent for imaginary land, though. No? All right, next, I wanna get into the even nastier scams that gave crypto projects such a bad name in the first place. Tell me to stay, but I couldn't, even if I wanted, tell me to lie. I couldn't, even if I wanted, tell me to lie. This entire section is about rug pulls, the pump and dump scheme of the crypto world. It's exactly what it sounds like. You think you're investing in something stable and dependable, like standing on the rug in your living room. The prospect of getting knocked on your ass is always there, but you don't seriously consider it because of, you know, gravity. Then the rug gets pulled out from under you, similar to what happens when crypto promoters hype up a coin and sell it really quickly, then ghost on your ass. YouTube investigator CoffeeZilla paid this influencer named Dylan Dennis $1,000 to post a fake ad for an NFT project that spelled out scam in the caption. Dylan thought it was real and it proved the point that most influencers will promote any scam that's sent their way, if the price is right. I've accepted that I'm a micro influencer now and I'm always checking myself to make sure I'm not being a bad role model in that regard. 
Some things are more important than money, but not for these people. We're gonna speed run these, but just know there's a hundred more just like one coin. Founder Ruja Ignatova smiled in everyone's faces, pumped up her Ponzi scheme, promising it would be the Bitcoin killer. In two years, nobody will speak about Bitcoin anymore. Raised $4 billion and disappeared in October 2017. She's the only woman on FBI's 10 most wanted list. Some say she's dead, but I doubt it. Her brother pled guilty to fraud and money laundering in 2019. Anubis Dow, another dog coin project. This joint raised $60 million in ETH for their Ankh tokens. Anubis, Ankh, there's always some kind of clever branding attached because humans are very visual creatures and we need a story to buy into. It took them 24 hours after funding was complete to send all that money to a different address and disappear. Developers were anonymous. They ran a Discord server and a Twitter account. That's it. They didn't even have a website. The coin dropped to zero and the creators are probably on an island somewhere sipping pina coladas. Magnate Finance. This one stands out because it illustrates that this is a serial crime. Last August, Magnate Finance was rug pulled after developers manipulated the price directly. They're suspected to have pulled $6.4 million after doing a similar scam with Soulfire in 2022 and Kokomo Finance earlier last year. They wiped all their socials and deleted their website immediately after. Squid Game token. <laughs> Basically, an influencer hyped this coin up with a lot of press after the Netflix series popped off. And I do mean right after. It raised $3.3 million since the internet loves pointless shit, and the developers ran off with the bag shortly after. Noticing the pattern by now? Apparently, their website prevented people from dumping their coins before the developers could, like an anti-whale mechanism. A Twitch streamer caught it live as the market cap dropped from $2.2 trillion to zero in a matter of seconds. Dollars. And now the market... Oh! Oh! It went to zero! And damn! There we go! Squid Games! Sayonara, mother cat! Mm. Classic. Reporting live from the edit. I was debating whether I should include this or not, but a piece about crypto cons is incomplete without discussing pig butchery, a progressive and devastating form of cyber fraud that was covered in a dope piece by John Oliver recently. According to a special report by Reuters from last year, it's already a billion dollar industry. Let me explain how it works real quick. Say you get a random text from a nice young lady or man or whoever makes this hypothetical work for you. For most of us, this convo would end in a matter of seconds since you don't know them, but there's some people from an older generation who don't have their guard up like we do. And even some younger people, y'all build a rapport over months and they drop in trading tips and recommendations here and there as they build your trust. Then they put you onto a legit trading platform like Big One, for example, and send you the link for a fake version of it called BigOneIT.com. You experiment with small deposits in this new site and get nice returns back for the first few times you try it out. Just like sports betting apps, this builds up your confidence. You drop large amounts of money over time and eventually your new friend urges you to get more risky. As soon as you pass a certain amount or realize you can't withdraw your funds, the new friend disappears and you're out tens of thousands of dollars overnight. That's pig butchering. And you can probably see how they chose the name now. This isn't a hypothetical. That exact scenario is what happened to a 71-year-old man from California. The account his funds got sent to hosted on Binance, one of the biggest exchanges in the world. And it belonged to Wang Yizhang, a Chinese businessman with a crazy amount of relationships with high-ranking government officials in Thailand. Nice medals, bro. The last piece of this story is dark, but it has to be acknowledged. The person who was texting that victim was probably a victim themselves. Pig butchering scams originated in China and they're usually carried out by victims of trafficking. The full report is in the description. I'm sharing this to make sure y'all don't walk away from this piece thinking you're immune to getting caught up just because you don't invest in cryptocurrencies. A new friend or romantic partner might just have you considering it one day. All right, back to me. Show me a little attention. In the intro, I mentioned my handful of early investments in various coins. 
I pulled those out last year and never looked back. It was all rooted in money, a desperation to improve my life circumstances by getting even a little bit of a return. I used to check my balance on Coinbase pretty frequently and got hyped whenever I saw the line go up. Speaking of, the SEC sued Coinbase last summer, alleging that they need to register as securities exchanges, brokers, and clearing agencies. They say everything except Bitcoin is a security, which ultimately comes down to how the legal system will define it. The fact that a federal judge recently ruled that trading crypto based on insider knowledge is against securities law doesn't exactly help the exchanges. Granted, it was a default judgment because the trader didn't show up, but still. Now that I'm on the other side of all this, I see it for what it is and realize I gotta stop doing things just because they have the potential to be profitable. If I don't know what the f I'm doing and I don't care about it in the first place, it's no longer worth my attention. That's just me though. What y'all think? Y'all got the information now. Can't say I ain't tell you. Figured I'd try talking to y'all at the end for once. I really appreciate y'all watching. Um, making these is a beautiful challenge every time. And I can't keep going without y'all's support. So everybody commenting, everybody watching without commenting, everybody watching at home on your TV, watching on your phone, you matter. What you think about my videos matters. And that's why I try to answer every comment. So keep them coming, man. Talk to me. Let me know what y'all think about my work. And I promise to keep giving y'all the best work I possibly can. If you haven't seen other episodes in this series, there's a whole playlist that's probably on the screen right now. And uh, my Patreon is also on the screen if you want to support even more than watching these for free, which is already more than enough. Uh, you can also join the channel. There's a link in my description for that. All the sources and chapters and... Uh, music that I've used in the episode is also in the description. There's a whole Spotify playlist, by the way. And you can follow me on Instagram if you care about that type of thing. <laughs> <laughs>